So you leave the Cayman, uh, Grand Cayman on May the 5th. May the 5th. Which is a little less than two weeks away. Oh my gosh, I can't, I can't believe it's already here. Oh, um, I like to call it an excited nervous. So there's definitely excitement there. I like, I can't believe it's actually here. It's actually happening, but still a little bit of nerves. You know, I still have some packing to do. I still have to sort out all my accessories and everything else. And of course, navigating flying to another country during all of this. I haven't traveled since summer 2019 so i guess it's about two years now so that's a little different i mean i've been to cayman brack right but that's yeah, yeah. it's not the same at least you've been in the plane yes right? at least that but to to travel during a pandemic is giving me definitely i'm not scared but it's just you know you don't know what to expect yeah, different. so exactly different. Right. different is the word so excited though i'm i'm just i can't even imagine what's going to happen and what it's going to be like so it's good to have you in the studio today thank you your chaperone is not here <laughs> this morning flying solo today flying solo. that's all right <laughs> that's okay. how it'll be at miss universe yeah. so <laughs> preparation <laughs> preparation is key yep so mariah we're going to have a fun time up to uh we're we'll heading up to 12 o'clock okay we've got some breaks in between but I've got some questions Ooh. for you this morning. They're fun questions. <laughs> okay. So I had to plagiarize a bit uh, on the internet. <laughs> I got them off some of the websites. So yeah. The, the, the Miss, Miss Universe, mm -hmm. Miss World, Miss Nobody Miss will USA, ever know. You know. Uh, but they're great. You know, yeah. Some great questions. Yeah. Nobody will ever know. Nobody it's will fine. ever know. <laughs> so this one is, a, is, is, this one is the hardest one, I think. Okay. All right. What was your hardest uh, sacrifice getting to this point? For me, I would have to say it's sacrificing the time that I spend with my family. So I'm a very family oriented person. I have a big family or I consider it a big family. I, I guess there's bigger families than that. But for me, it's a big family. So I'm very close with all of my siblings. You know, this is one of the first years that all of us are here in Cayman at the same time because there's always been one of us away at school. You know, when I was at school or my sister was in the UK at school, there's just always been someone missing. So it never felt complete. And this was the first year that everyone was here at the same time we were all living in the same house and then we were just having fun spending time together and you know getting closer and just having a good time and then now i have a lot of preparation to do i'm driving up and down all day long waking up early to go to the gym or do interviews and then i come home late as well from being on the road all day so i really don't get to spend as much time right now with them as i would like to as what would be ideal for me but I'm very grateful that they're very understanding. They know that it's a sacrifice I have to make. And you know what? Thank God for technology that at least I can call them. I can video chat with them if I'm not there in person. And that's definitely going to save me at Miss Universe and during quarantine when I come back. The fact that I can at least still see them through the phone and talk to them and update them. So that's probably the biggest sacrifice for me, that family time. Wow. I am asking you these questions this morning. I want our listeners to get to know you yeah. better. Yeah. Mm -hmm to know the real Mariah. Dun, dun, dun. Very deep, very, <laughs> very deep. deep. Very deep, very deep. So Mariah, if you, if, you, uh, if you could only have one wish, just one wish, mm -hmm. what would you wish for? Ooh, I mean, in this world, I would have to wish, obviously, for the pandemic to be healed is that the right word gone, gone yeah gone. not over. not be around anymore to be Literally. over yes yeah. over is the right word so the pandemic to be over and again it relates back to family right i mean i'm blessed and lucky to have my immediate family here in cayman but there's so many cousins and so many aunts and uncles in other parts of the world that haven't been able to get here and see us we, we usually spend christmas together all of our extended family we, we weren't able to do that last year and um you know my grandmother as well who is here she hasn't got to see some of her kids and whatnot because they're overseas in other countries. So it would just be really nice, not only for me, but everyone to be able to have that opportunity to see their loved ones again. Give them a hug. Give them a hug and be healthy and safe and just not have to worry about this. I think we've been dealing with it for so long that I think that would be everyone's wish, actually, if I'm honest, is just to be over with this. And I won't say get life back to normal, but to have a better life and move forward from it. Okay. All right. This one. What is that one thing that we could not know about you by just looking at you? That one thing. There's so many things. <laughs> okay. So I'll take it from this angle, right? Because 
obviously I'm, I'm Miss Cayman and people see the glitz and the glam and the sophistication and the grace and the poise. I'm actually quite a clumsy person. <laughs> You could have fooled me. Exactly. So I think that's something that people really wouldn't know about me. If you ask my siblings, I go around, I just like, my shoulder hits random walls when I'm walking. My hip hits into like the side of a desk. I don't know where it comes from. And I was a dancer too. So I'm just like, what is wrong with my feet? I don't know if I've lost it or what. I've jammed my finger so many times. I, I'm quite clumsy. I'll say that. <laughs> what would be your dream vacation? Who a world tour is? Can I cheat? Can I give that answer? <laughs> oh yeah. You so it's one place. It's your dream. Vacation. Yeah, I would definitely do a world tour if I could. Um, stop over into so many different places, almost everywhere, probably um, for at least a week, and that would probably take me a, quite a long time, more than a year maybe. Uh, but if I go for a whole week, but you know, being being Miss, Miss Cayman and obviously now preparing to go to Miss Universe and starting to see and really think about all the different countries that are going to be there, it's really opened my mind to like, wow, I want to just see the world. I want to see where all these girls come from and I want to go and visit all these places. So I can't choose just one. I think it'll have to be a world tour. <laughs> Me too. And then you'll cover everything, right? Exactly. And you can sit back and relax. And yeah. In my, in, in my case, look for retirement. <laughs> What's your favorite book, Mariah? You know, I'll be honest, in recent years, I haven't read too many books. I've just been preoccupied with other stuff. If it's not school books, I mean. <laughs> but one book that I am interested in and want to read, and it's on my list, is the book by Michelle Obama. I believe it's called Becoming. I actually got that from my mom last, e last year, or maybe the year before, for Christmas. And it's in the house, so I can steal it whenever I want. <laughs> but that's one book that is on my to-do list to read very, very soon. Actually, I might take it to Miss Universe so I can read it on the plane. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite gemstone? I mean, I have to go with my birthstone, right? So I'm born in September, so my birthstone is sapphire, the nice blue glittery, mm -hmm. glittery one. So it's either sapphire or just a plain diamond because, I mean, you can never go wrong with diamonds. <laughs> no, never, never. <laughs> Girl's best route. We always say that uh, men can learn from women. Mm -hmm. What do you think women can learn from men? In my opinion, a lot of times I think that us as women, I don't want to say silence ourselves, but we quiet ourselves. We sometimes feel like uh, the men assert themselves more, put themselves in the forefront and take that stand. So we just kind of let them and we all have our own opinions, our own thoughts, and we kind of just sit back and... and maybe not always share that with the world. So I think one thing we can learn from men is to be more assertive, put yourself out there. I think men really, most of the times they don't care what people think, you know, they're going to do what they want to do anyways, because they think it's right. And they're going to take the stand that they want to take. And I think that as women, we should do that. We should just be more bold, I think is the word I'm looking for. Be more bold like men, be unapologetic. Men will take up space and they won't apologize for it. Sometimes we as women feel like we need to be dainty and um, stand in the background and let other people do what they want to do and, and not always take that forefront. But I will say times are changing and so many women are not like that anymore. And they are taking the stand. I mean, look at women who are leaders, presidents, run for politics, everything like that. So it's definitely not the case that every woman's like that. I'm not saying that at all. But I think we as women can still have a lot of far, a much farther way to go that we can be even more assertive, be even more bold and take up even more space. Hmm. Good answer. Thank you. Now, uh, if you were a breakfast cereal, <laughs> what would you be? <laughs> okay, can I tell you this, Anita? This is the most hilarious question ever. My sisters are going to die laughing at this because I, my favorite snack food whatever in the world is cereal i am a cereal junkie yeah miss india really didn't know that so that is probably the most fitting question you could ever ask me <laughs> oh my gosh i have so many favorite cereals i mean cheerios honey nut cheerios is my safe option if i'm just like you know i just need a safe cereal I'm, i don't really need too much flavors right now that's my safe option a safe cereal <laughs> yeah <laughs> my fun cereal if i want to be a little crazy, be a little out there is probably Cocoa Krispies or Cocoa Pebbles because I love that chocolate. My go-to cereal right now because it's like a mix of healthy but I still get a little pizzazz in there is Special K has a cereal called Chocolatey Delight. So it's that good um, brand cereal as the base but then there's little chocolate pieces and it just 
it sets the tone. So I'm going to have to say right now in my life, I'm going to be Special K chocolatey cereal, chocolatey delight cereal. Okay. Who's your role model? <laughs> I have so many role models. I've grown up in a family of amazing women. I mean, men also, but in this case, women and all of them play such a special role in my life and have inspired me in some way of course my mom is a great role model I've learned so many things from her but another great role model for me has been my sisters especially my older sister who like I spoke about last week when I was here she is the main reason that I chose my platform for the year as cancer awareness and support she battled brain cancer at six years old she's now living with the side effects and she just gets up every day and fights to live a normal life and that to me is so inspiring to just carry on despite the obstacles be resilient be courageous that's something else that really inspires me about her as my role model is she is not afraid of anything if so I'm the type of person that if there's like a crowd or something and I'm like oh I don't know if I should go over there like I don't want to bump into people or try to move people around she doesn't care she will just be courageous and brave go through the crowd do what she has to do she's not afraid to talk to anyone she's not afraid to do anything and that's really inspiring to me and she's definitely one of my biggest role models okay I know your platform you have two platforms right? yes uh, remind me of them again. Okay. Yes, yeah, so my first platform is Cancer Awareness and Support, and then I added the Fight Against Cyberbullying as my second platform at the beginning of this year. Okay. Good morning. It's really good to have you in the studio. Thank you we're for just having, having me. We're having a one-on-one -on -one time. Yeah, we're having a, a fun good time today. <laughs> good time today. Good time. <laughs> Oh, we should come in early. I would have more time. I know. Yeah. I actually ran from another interview here, so oh, no. double duty today. Oh, my gosh. Well, we're glad to have you. And I'm sure our listeners are enjoying your answers to what I call fun questions. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mariah, your platform, one of your, pla of your two platforms is uh, a bullying. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, my question to you, have you ever been bullied? Have you ever bullied anyone? Gosh, I mean, off the top of my head, I, I don't believe so, but I really hope I have never. <laughs> I really, I can't remember every moment in my life right now, but I really hope I never have bullied anyone. Okay, I'll say this. I've maybe bullied my siblings out of pure fun oh. and love, oh. <laughs> but I definitely have never intentionally bullied anyone. Um, I could never see myself doing that. I'm a very empathetic person. I mean, I can cry at an aunt getting run over on the road like <laughs> I I feel things very deeply for other people and it just breaks my heart to see them going through anything hurtful so I could never see myself doing that to someone else uh, I, I can't see it either <laughs> what's your biggest fear oh <sighs> so many fears <laughs> I'm well I'm really afraid okay I don't want to be like morbid or anything but I'm I am afraid of you know losing my parents eventually when that time comes like I mentioned earlier I'm very close to my family mm -hmm. I have a big family and I just can't imagine and I don't want to imagine life without my parents and especially not being able to not having enough time with them not being able to learn everything from them that I can not being able to repay them for everything they've done for me in my life that's a big fear of mine i i think we all have that yeah fear. i agree i completely losing, agree losing loved ones yeah whole, you know or even dying yeah dying yourself is when you think about it for me personally i just go into an existential crisis i'm it just it's a black hole i just can't go all day long <laughs> no you don't want to do that now. no 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 we have fun over here no mariah um if you woke up tomorrow mm -hmm. and gained any or quality, what would you want it to be? That's a hard one. Ooh. I'm torn between being able to speak every language in the world, because, you know, we were just talking about doing a world tour, world tour. traveling mm -hmm. everywhere, mm -hmm. or being able to fly. Because I think it would be really cool at night to just fly and see all the lights lit up at night and f fly to different countries, right? Like fly over, like imagine flying over like New York with all those buildings and skyscrapers. I think that would be really cool. But I, I also would love to speak every language. So that's that's a hard one. I think I I like that one too. The language one, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Um, if you could give yourself, or if you could give your younger self your mm -hmm. younger mariah mm -hmm. self one piece of advice what would it be i would probably tell her 
to just go for it. Don't be so scared of everything. So when I was younger, actually my whole entire life, I've always naturally been a perfectionist. I had to do everything perfectly or if I thought I wasn't going to do it perfectly, I wouldn't do it at all. Um, and it, it made me lose out on a lot of opportunities. Looking back, I can see that obviously now. In the moment, I couldn't see that. But it really cost me a lot of, I think it cost me a lot of joy and a lot of opportunities. And as I've gotten older, I've learned that really there's no such thing as perfection. You can't possibly strive for that. You just need to do it. Just take the risk. Put yourself out there. I'm a very risk averse person. So I would just tell her to not be afraid. Like, try anything every opportunity you get just go for it just try what's the worst that could happen i mean just enjoy the opportunity make the most of the experience and that's really the closest to perfect that you can get i i absolutely agree with you and i can actually see you telling yourself that yeah you i'm looking yeah i'm looking at the bag picturing it as myself <laughs> after your reign mm -hmm. we'll need another queen right do we really? I mean, I could do this forever. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yes, we definitely will need someone. We're, we're going to have a pageant. Tear, tear for me. Okay. I have to give up the crown, but we will have a pageant this year, 2021. Uh, what, what is there a deadline for? Um... The applications, yes, are currently open, and I believe the deadline is the 25th of May. So you have about a month. So get your applications in there, girls. Yep. And would you just, just encourage them this morning. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. There's so much I could say. I mean, the way that being Miss Cayman has transformed my life is something that I can't even put into words. But even more than that, just being a contestant was so transformative just in that aspect. Because you really don't know how strong you are until being strong is your only option. And I think that was my mantra throughout the pageant when I was a contestant, because looking into it, you're like, Oh my gosh, this is a lot of responsibility. Can I handle this? A lot of time pressure, but you can, you can handle it. And it's really about challenging yourself, stepping out of your comfort zone, because at the end of the day, as long as you grow from it and you gain something from that experience, then you're a winner. I mean, yeah. obviously only one person can wear the crown. And actually the first year that wasn't me. And I still gained from that and I still grew from that. I was a completely different person and it really changed my outlook on life as well. And then, you know, you never know what could happen. Life takes you where you need to be at that moment. And I did not need to be Miss Cayman in 2019, but I needed to be Miss Cayman in 2020. So here I am and you never know what your future holds, but the only person that can hold you back from getting to that place is you. Okay. So just take the risk. Like I was telling my younger self earlier, just take the risk. risk. What is the worst that could happen? There you go. Mariah, let's step back a little bit. Um, back in, was it 2019? Yes. 2019. So you were the first runner up. Right. Just for all listeners mm -hmm. who, who, who are not aware of how you got yep. to this point. Mm -hmm. Right. So you were the first runner up. Mm -hmm. And because of COVID last year, there was no pageant. Correct. So, um, the committee decided, Miss Cameron Univ Islands University Committee decided to, because you were the first runner up, no pageant, you were the next in line for the, for the crown. Correct. So, were you surprised that that happened? Absolutely. I mean, it was, I actually got the call during lockdown and I was, they, so as first runner up, you have the responsibility to attend events or take over if something were to happen to the queen or if she was not available so you know she in 2019 Khadijah who was the queen obviously went to Miss Universe and there was some events going on while she was there that they asked me to attend because she was overseas or she had conflicting events in one night they would ask me to attend so I did do a few stuff as the first runner up um, so 2020 so they would call me when there's events hmm. happening uh, or they needed me to attend. And then 2020, we were in lockdown, like full lockdown. This is when we couldn't even go to March. the... Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And they called me and said, would you want... Would you be open to the opportunity of going to Miss Universe and representing us? You know, um, it's not final yet. We're just in talks. But we wanted to know if you were interested. And I was like, of course I'm interested. <laughs> I would never say, say no. Of course. Of course you work hard. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So then you know they went into talks of it and it was finally finalized and then i that was all the way back in like we're talking about march april may sometime around there and i didn't actually get crowned until september so kind of in the summer months i was just doing my work working from home not really thinking about it and then september came they're like okay we're gonna crown you this day and i was like oh i i actually have to do this now okay let's go you ready? yes i was definitely ready it was an opportunity that i definitely would not pass up for sure well i'm glad i'm glad you're you know 
you you grew into that position actually agree 100 yeah, percent. you grew yeah and you've grown i'll tell you I, I yeah miss anita saw me when i was a contestant yeah 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 <laughs> you were in the studio here doing your thing you know and we we, in, we were doing the interview shun and i were um yes that's true yeah interviews. i mean you came to toastmasters and yeah, everything yeah, yeah, yeah you were there for a lot of the stuff yeah, as contestants and, uh, i've watched you really really grown oh, to yourself and thank I'm you i'm looking forward to the pageant on, on the 16th of may yes i've saved, I've saved the date oh I've heard everything and you know what the next day is a holiday in cayman right oh I the like that. I believe it is. Someone oh. correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it is a holiday. So I'm like, this is just perfect timing. Holiday, Everyone can stay up late is. and watch Miss That's Universe. Right. That's right. I, I didn't even think about it. Yeah. Oh, Brian, before I let you go this morning, anything you want to say to our listeners? I would just like to say thank you so much for all the love and support I've been getting up until this point. It it really does mean a lot. You might think it means nothing, but just hearing two words or hearing you say that you're proud of me or whatever the case is, it really makes a difference in my day because this is an overwhelming job you know there is a lot of aspects to it that people don't really see on the outside maybe maybe we'll talk about that next time we'll see but there's a lot that goes into it and it's a lot of pressure as well so it, it really means a lot to hear especially my Caymanians my the people that I'm representing say that they are proud of me and I'm doing a great job that means a lot so thank you so much for all the love and support from everywhere in the world that I'm getting it from and I really appreciate all of you and please continue to follow my journey to Miss Universe and we are proud of you here at Radio Kima as well, Mariah. Mariah.